Good evening, everyone. Uh, let me start with a few words about the recent elections held in the United States. What we saw was the strength and resilience of American democracy, and we saw it in action. And the American people prove once again that democracy is who we are. There was a strong rejection of election deniers at every level from those seeking to lead our states and those seeking to serve in Congress and also those seeking to oversee the elections. And uh, there was a strong rejection of political violence and voter intimidation. And there was an emphatic statement that in America, the will of the people prevails. I have uh, I've traveled this week and it's been clear just how closely the world and our allies and our competitors as well have been following our elections at home. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little cold. And what these elections showed is that there's a deep and unwavering commitment in America to preserving and protecting and defending democracy. Now, let me speak briefly about our agenda over the past few days in Egypt and in uh, Cambodia and here in Indonesia. In this moment of great global challenges, from global inflation to the climate crisis to Russia's brutal war against Ukraine, we're bringing together the broadest possible coalition of partners to deliver results. <clears throat> At COP27 in Egypt, I made it clear that thanks to the bold agenda of our administration, we pursue from day one to tackle the climate crisis and advance energy and security at home and around the world, the United States will meet, the United States will meet our emissions target under the, our targets under the Paris Agreement. And we're going to keep working with our partners to support the most vulnerable countries in building resilience to climate impacts and to uh, align global ambition with the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal while supercharging our clean energy transition. At the U.S. ASEAN Summit, in the East Asia Summit, I laid out a commitment for, to working with our partners in the Indo-Pacific to ensure a future that uh, is vital to this region, that's free and open and prosperous as well as secure. And uh, I met with our allies from Australia, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, underscoring our commitment and deepening our engagement with our closest partners and strengthening cooperation among our allies to meet shared threats to our own security and to this, their security, including the DPRK. And let me meet, uh, I, I, I just met in person with Xi Jinping of the People's Republic of China. We had, <coughs> excuse me, we had an open and candid conversation about our intentions and our priorities. It was clear, he was clear and I was clear, that we'll defend American interests and values, promote universal human rights, and stand up for the international order and work in lockstep with our allies and partners. We're going to compete vigorously, but I'm not looking for conflict. I'm looking to manage this competition responsibly. And I want to make sure, make sure that every country abides by the international rules of the road. And we discussed that. The one China policy, our one China policy has not changed, has not changed. We oppose unilateral change in the status quo by either side, and we're committed to maintaining the peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits. It was also clear that China and the United States should be able to work together where we can to solve global challenges that require every nation to do its part. We discussed Russia's aggression against Ukraine, reaffirmed our shared belief in the threat or the use of nuclear weapons is totally unacceptable, and I asked that Secretary Blinken travel to China to follow up on our discussions and continue keeping the lines of communication open between our two countries. Looking ahead at the G20 meetings tomorrow, we're going to be talking, taking on the very issues that matter to the people's lives, not only here, but uh, also, uh, also our allies and our partners. That means tackling the suffering that Russia aggression has unleashed, not just in Ukraine people, but the people around the world, particularly food insecurity, and strengthening the fundamentals of our global economy for everyone, support for debt relief, reforms for multilateral development banks, investments to bolster global health security, and to make sure the world is better prepared for the next pandemic. The G20 has been an important forum for the world's largest economies to work together for the good of people everywhere. And I'm looking forward to our meetings tomorrow. Now, let me close with this. On my first trip overseas last year, I said that America was back, back at home, back at the table, and back to leading the world. In the year and a half that's followed, we've shown exactly what that means. America is keeping its commitments, 
America is investing in our strength at home. America is working alongside our allies and partners to deliver real, meaningful progress around the world. And at this critical moment, no nation is better positioned to help build the future we want than the United States of America.